we're about to hear from Phil Lee from Optimal Stormwater. And Phil uh, is a water engineer at Optimal with uh, experience in drains, HECRAS, music, and other programs. He's worked on many different WSUD, OSC, and flat modeling designs. He's uh, got quite a bit of experience at uni. He's got two master's degrees, civil and water engineering. Um, so they provide him with an excellent overview of Australian rainfall and runoff, and in both quantity and quality. So since joining Optimal in 2018, Phil has worked managing multiple stormwater quality and stormwater harvesting construction projects, including large trash rack GPTs, wetland re rectifications, and stormwater harvesting projects. So please welcome Phil to the lecture. Thanks. Uh, so a bit introduction. Actually, I'm a first man in the stormwater industry. Um, and uh, today I'm going to represent a uh, construction project, which is very interesting. Give you guys some details about how USA police actually implement underground. Uh, the project is from the University Council, Central University Council, to make this happen. Uh, let's start with some background of the catchment. First day is the uh, University Council. The platform over with I mean, is the project we're talking about. It's located at the middle of the city, and the whole catchment is in two sub catchments, which is a uh, road catchment, which has lots of polluted from the street, and the residential catchment about 60 hectares. Here we go is the optimal team and the counter team. We work together to bring this project to happening. And um, actually, I'll make a 10 minutes video just make me feel very well nervous. And uh, please enjoy the video. Give you the background of the uh, real life construction and where are some of the train and train about the stuff you Urban wetlands. They're providing habitat for thousands of species. Improved the runoff quality from urban catchments. Such beauty and sensitivity. Uh, Sydney is one of the most beautiful cities around the world and is famous for its beautiful harbors and beaches. People here are very protective of their environment, especially the waterways. Since uh, the very first time that uh, water-sensitive urban design was introduced in 1990s, uh, Council used their due diligence to protect their waterways. Black Marival is uh, located at the heart of the city and is surrounded by beautiful waterways, which makes it perfect habitat for local vegetation and small animals. The new construction project at Black Marival makes the wetland condition even better. Blackmore Oval wetland was originally a wetland built for the motorway construction next door. It was a silt pond for that project and at the end of the project they just left it fenced off, full of silt, no longer operating as a wetland, no longer doing filtration of the, the water and so on. So the council decided to reactivate the operation of the pond so that all the water running off from that catchment could be polished by the pond before it goes into the harbour. The problem was we didn't own the land. It took many years to get the land because it was held up. Motorway projects possibly going to use it. Eventually they decided they weren't going to use it and they handed the land over to us. Council got a, a grant from the state government of $177,000 to assist them. The wetland was initiated. The project is a success and has turned the previous eyesore into a peaceful natural pond for the public. The wetland is now providing benefits for the harbour. Got a dual project here. One is that it filters the water from the road before it enters the harbour. And the second one is that we've got a water reuse scheme where we're collecting water from the residential drainage channel, which is on this side of the site, use it on the playing field next door, and the surplus that we take out of the canal, we put back through the pond to clean that as well. So there's a, a dual purpose in the process. The, the harvesting of out of the stormwater guarantees we're getting a constant flow in the main pond, even though we haven't had rainfall. The combination of stormwater harvesting and wetland improvements help achieving the maximum environmental outcome. 
The solution we've come up here with is a lot more practical. Um, the original design was completed in about 2012, 2013, and a lot of things have changed since then. And the alternative design we came up with is to preserve the existing infrastructure as natural environment as much as we could. So what we decided was to leave all the original banks, leave the original base and elevate the water level. Our alternative design was to work with nature rather than against it. The work with nature philosophy minimized the waste generated and it required less demolition as well. Um, we were able to make calls as to where around the sites we could reuse those materials. We mulched a lot of things, reused it in all of the, uh, the areas around this, around the wetland and also the surrounding park. And, um, and made the most of what was a, uh, be beneficial to the area. Rather than going to the landfill, excavated spoil from the wetland was screened to separate the plastics and then mixed with clean soil to be reused for embankment construction. Bush waste was also used as mulch for landscaping and we engaged over 4,000 indigenous plants to rehabilitate around the wetland. The optimal stormwater philosophy is always to reuse, recycle and reduce. However, in order to achieve the maximum environmental benefits, we also need to know what's happening in the catchment. It's important to note that all stormwater is polluted and every single stormwater is going to be containing sediments, gross pollution and the nutrients of nitrogen and phosphorus. Stormwater pollutants contains total suspended solids, total nitrogen, total phosphorus, and gross pollutants. But to treat them, a treatment train is required, which should include both uh, primary treatment and secondary treatment. And here we have a good example, where we have to have the physical screening of the gross pollution trap, followed by the green infrastructure of the con spill control basin, which is our wetland, the gross pollution traps capturing the main large gross pollutants larger than a millimeter. So we're talking all your plastics, all your sediments. It will let through nitrogen and phosphorus, which makes it really important to have a treatment train. And as part of that, we've got our wetland, which is um, full of plants, which will then strip out a lot of the finer sediments and silts and the nitrogen and phosphorus. With the combination of GPTs and the green infrastructure, the polluted uh, runoff from the upstream catchment can be treated. Optimal audited the GPTs on site and constructed improvement rectifications as part of the project, so the treatment frame is fully activated. The nature that it brings back here, it's not just about the, the um, importance of treating the stormwater, but it's about creating an ecological habitat and allowing the community to enjoy this habitat. The local community has been involved in the rehabilitation progress of the wetland. Walking around Blackmore Oval wetlands and you'll see these wild animal boxes. Guess who made it? This is the, this is the box that was used uh, locally here. So it's for bats. This is the entry and exit hole. This is a lid so that they can be inspected or cleaned. You can, if you look around in the trees up high, you can see these in small. The uh, wildlife people are quite happy for various species to use one box. Yeah. I think yep. I painted a couple of them. <laughs> With the great support of the local community, more residents are going to enjoy the outcomes of this project. It's nice for all blogs to come around and have a cup of tea and a bit of a chat. Just, uh, just enjoy the company really. Yeah. I ride my bike through here all the time. The bike part's getting renewed at the moment. Uh, the new bridge over the canal is great. So yeah, I like that. And I know a lot of people use it. It's a much better area now. Urban stormwater management not only regards the stormwater runoff as a liability, but also as a resource to harvest on site, which you can see here in Blackmore Oval. For example, if we use potable water for irrigation purpose, the water comes from the dam. Just imagine the storm water from the dam all the way to the treatment facilities, then pump all the way here, but we use it just for irrigation purpose. Such a high level of energy involved in this process. But it makes so much sense if we can have some water locally. For example, the water comes from the sky are free, and plenty of them is more than what we need to have here. In Sydney area, the annual precipitation is more than a thousand mils. So plenty of water we can use as a source. If we can harvest this 
stone water as a source, then send to the treatment room and store it in the tank and we use this one for irrigation. It will dramatically reduce the energy consumption during the whole process. We have faced many challenges during the construction phase to ensure that the housing system is easy to operate and maintain. Due to the high salinity issues connecting with the tidal water, a salinity sensor has been installed and we also created a bypass for the salty water in the resume. By utilizing the program Ecology Control Unit, the housing system can smart bypass salty water automatically. We also designed the pump wheel to include a primary treatment GPT to treat liters in the residential drain channel as well as protect the treatment system. Automatic backwash filter and a powerful UV when considered as part of the treatment strain to guarantee the quality of recycled stormwater. When the environment and engineering meet each other, the chemistry creates a much better living place. Let's see the Black Marvel opening day attended by the local community, especially the next generation. Um, all of the local residents who've come along today, most importantly of all, all of the outstanding children from Rose Cottage, if we give them a round of applause, they've come along to, to learn about sustainability and about the benefits of this project. The function of urban wetlands is not only about stormwater treatment, it is also providing a classroom for the students to learn about nature and sustainability. We were just here earlier and a lot of school children came um, with plastic buckets and nets and they picked up different wildlife, they picked up, they picked up a scoop of the water and they were able to count how many bugs there were in there and that was an indication of a healthy uh, environment. And we've created a habitat here, um, not just for the flora and fauna but we've created it for the people and the education starting with school, children, school children all the way to um, engineers is is paramount in our society and we're, we're all progressing down a, a path where environmental engineering will become more part of everyday life. Thanks for watching. Yes. Yeah, I just spent a lot of time with different people and the, actually the idea has come from uh, which I believe the stormwater industry is for everybody. So it's such a, that's the reason why I love this industry too much. Quiz for you guys. So from radio, we already understand there's a great hydraulic design in Wayland. We also have a, the way like to polish the water come from the the channel. What's the missing point in the treatment chain? Exactly. Primary treatment activities. And actually the primary treatment is the key which way one on the side. Um, let's say how story. When we first outside, this is what happened in the wayland, and this is the result of a non-operational GPT. We do have to uh, clean so GPT at upstream of the wayland. However, it does been maintained for a long time, and uh, probably it's got some hydraulic design on correct. We did an uh, auditing for the uh, university council as well as part of the project, and uh, we've been finding. Currently, it looks like it doesn't been clean for more than 10 years. So we did a rectification job on site. We increased the wear height, so the, the pollutants, instead of bypass go the downstream to the wetland, it will be trapped in the uh, basket, which is the available screen of the GBT family. <coughs> oh. Let's just jump to the parking system. <laughs> And give you guys a video of the technical side of the hockey system. Uh, the, the street, like a uh, creative solution for the hockey system on site. Firstly, is we build a screen for the in the pump wheel. This is used for protecting the pump uh, because of the canal is directly connected to the residential catchments and uh, it's not been treated yet. So, in order to protect the pump wheel and the body treatment system, we build a primary screening system there and also it's been connecting to the salty water so it's a high sanity issue and what, what the solution we found is to build a sensor in pump wheel if we indicate it's a high uh, total TDS issue in the pump wheel 
we're gonna use the existing energy water bypass to drain the whole umbrella back to Canal. So the next part is the high high area waterfront residential uh, catchment can be harvested. We also let's move to the treatment room side. We this is a PLC, which is the brain of the uh, whole system. Um, we have the auto backwash filter to guarantee like uh, the water come from the uh, pump where it's been filtered before go to the tank. Uh, however, because it's auto backwash, so the pollutants is not going it's not going nowhere. It's still in the filter. So with backwash. We design other parts to send the polluted water go to the GPD at the upstream of the grid line. So actually, the, the TSS will be treated by the GPD and fully polished by the grid line. So the, uh, it's a great idea to, to use all this facility to treat the uh, stored water from catchment. Just because, yeah, uh, we are out of time, so let's jump to the other one. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there we go. Um, another quiz for you guys. What's the top three things you see in the USA asset management? I know some of you guys come from council, some come from the uh, consulting company, so different people have different opinions, but what's your opinion? Let me give you a hint first. Definitely the maintenance. Uh, if, if you still remember what the photo we taken when first on site, just because the GPT is not being maintained properly, the whole wheel line is destroyed. In terms of the maintenance, uh, you need to have a proper access, like a physical access, you can have any truck go to the site to clean everything. And you also need to have a remote web uh, so which makes the monitoring easier. You only need to one person go to the site, open it, what they was inside and decide what they what they need to be the next day. What's the second one? Okay, of course, we start the whole we start project is from some quality. That's all right. Including line. Two points. Records keeping. Records keeping. Very close. What is it? I The second one. Still more places. We already got a very good hardware. We have a pass with a truck can go. We have a good like a system which is easy to access. But we also need a software. The software is the data sheet and the clean specification of the particular site. You need this one uh, to be able to train in your contractor, a clean contractor, to do a perfect clean on site and say how the condition looks like on site to determine what's the next movement looks like. Hardware, software, of maintenance. What's the third one? Maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> so, you already have the software, you already have the hardware. Now you have you need to have the people to run the whole system. Which means you need to have a capacity building for your like a gas one council. You are still working, have a proper capacity building to understand the whole system working. Uh, like uh, it's a very interesting presentation from the K Dog this morning, talking about the number one um, you know, um, experience come from the uh, <coughs> is people retire. So the education is discontinued. Um, which makes the uh, uh, proper training and workshop very important in terms of the research management. To separate um, a quick like about the and future improvements about the discussion is <coughs> I think you will notice the 60 hectares of the uh, region uh, catchment that have a very much treatment. So that's why in the pump we have, we can send lots of like features and the pollutants. Um, in the future, if possible, this is a potential improvement that's time. 
to summary, non graph models tend to have a which including the flow and fora, which have a great habitat to uh, have that race, and the, the local community have a good place to go. Also, the cost of is training, uh, transfer from the liability to uh, actually store what asset to the council. And also, for the engineer to understand the whole trade and trade, how to make the system really working and easy to maintain. Finally, the student for our next generation, they have a good understanding of the environment. They can become the next story in our industry. I was going to ask, there's a whole lot of, uh, I've come from Canberra, yep. and in Canberra there's a whole lot of concreted drains that uh, probably mimic where old creek lines used to be. And uh, recent um, developments there, they've tried to pond some of those things. Is it possible to um, not have to do massive earthworks around these concrete drains and to minimise the impact on capital when you want to achieve something like this? Of course. Um, so I think the first thing we need to go to is the uh, auditing. We need to understand what's happening on the site at the moment and uh, uh, do a proper treatment for the existing infrastructures. Not, you know, spend money for some new one, but to improve the uh, efficiency of the existing structure. Also, it's, uh, it's been pointed out at the public uh, council uh, presentation. We're talking about um, we need to argue what's happening on site, then improve the GBTs, existing GBTs. This is the most cost effective way to you know, push the whole like, uh, performance of the you know, asset. Quick question. Yeah. I, uh, I couldn't help but notice the, um, the brand of the UV unit. And I wondered. Um, yeah. uh, no, we're not a few things. We bought it and they said, Wouldn't you like your name emblazoned on the thing? I went, Sure. <laughs> so they and I like, I wouldn't on the I was going to ask whether um, I'm interested in the, the whole validation of UV law production issue and whether council in this instance required a validated or ver verified unit or. Commissioning process to demonstrate that the that gave you the specified law productions. Sorry, I feel I should be doing what you know. Yeah. Um what's your opinion? <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. The um uh the best person of Optimal Stormwater who was involved in the sizing and selection and meeting house criteria is on me and here we are tomorrow. Um so he'll have a perfect answer for you. I don't know, I wasn't involved in the side. I have a feeling there wasn't the requirement for the validation um, and it was going to be checked with you know, regular monitoring of water to make sure it's meeting the requirements. Um, it's an interesting scenario, they can irrigate at night, they've got a reasonable control on the system when they do it, etc. Excess water is going through the wetland, so the how much of a priority it was to use a really high quality UV, not so important for this particular site. Sometimes it's critical, this one will. So a bit more flexibility in choosing units. And I'll be more into the process limits and uh, we actually pump out the UV power from like a 400 watt to um, 1600 watt. And this will give you the flexibility to, uh, you know, you can adjust the power level, but if you want to have a high level of uh, you know, UV level to treat uh, some grey water, then you can have it. Mm -hmm. So this is another uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <coughs> Short question, but um, yeah. Yeah. Well, 
piece that I didn't put on. This is a good question, which I didn't mention too much in my presentation, I can add anything. Um, after the construction, we're going to uh, make a, a menu for how the whole system train, uh, looks like, and uh, we provide two, three workshops to train the council members to how to properly train the uh, system. And we also align with the cleaning contractor to tell them how to, you know, uh, the frequency, the methodology to clean your device and to maintain your device. Um, the, uh, this is education part of the very important. And the second part is uh, the, what we provide in 12 months warranty. So in 12 months time, month time, we can you know, slowly like, just let our uh, management team uh, stay in the whole project support. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so maintenance is very important. And uh, um, it's been uh, involved in this project. So, what we want to find with the systems is <coughs> you have a good design, whether it's to someone else, and you have good construction, but it's to someone else, and then it seems to fall over. With, it, it gets handed over to council, and the guys don't understand. When an alarm goes off, they go, oh no, switch the model. <laughs> and uh, you know, you're wasting all the money in the infrastructure. So, Optimal Smallwater actually operates more than 100 water sustainability schemes um, across Sydney. Um, and we've offered to the council, would you like to do this one? They sort of said, we'll have a crack at it first. I think they'll probably come back and say, yeah, you yeah. do. So it's, it's a bit of, it makes their life easier. Um, it makes the system more reliable. They can get more positive comments if everything's working nicely, etc. And as soon as you get the person who knows all about it, moves from council, then the resources are lost, it seems to fall in the hole. Yep. And uh, so, Nothing works without good maintenance, and, and if they can't do it, we need to help them get maintenance. So, good. Yeah, good follow up. Uh, so, do you do regular monitoring of this system? Yes, ma'am. Um, do you have any particular targets that you're monitoring, or is it just flows, or is it the water quality as well? To, what were the targets for water quality? Yeah, we look at how much uh, water we're actually harvesting, and how many more tanks is actually being used to irrigate the field. And I think on a monthly basis, I'm not sure that. I think it's monthly. Uh, we know that and we sample the water and have that tested for all around months. Okay. Monthly basis. <laughs> Specifically for the, the main thing, which is putting it on a sports field, we're testing the bacteria. Yeah. You can test for a massive um, array of different chemicals and parameters, etc. But at the end of the day, it's only one you need to meet. And uh, so far, so. Thanks, Ryan. Very quick final question. I wanted to ask a question of the business of this. At the moment, that's probably council's OPEX, so they're constantly having to pay. How do you commercialise it and make it a business so that council doesn't have to pay? I might, if you're going to ask that to Murray, I might get him to tell you yeah, uh, right. outside. I just the, think if you can reduce the OPEX, it now becomes available to everybody. If like, the council doesn't have to pay, yeah. and you can make a business out of it, then you've got a business and everybody can benefit. Rather than I'm just going to make a comment to uh, make sure work with the cost effectiveness of water. Okay. So this project had multiple other benefits. Um, so if we were just doing it on the cost of savings of potable water, you wouldn't have done it. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Murray. So I think you'll agree that that was a very slick production that we <laughs> put together. So please join in. <laughs>